So I came across this library called React EXE, which is an interesting concept because I want to share and understand in general also how this works. So what this is before we get into how this works is that it's a library that can just evaluate your you know react code for a matter of fact so what that means is for example let's say you are building an application where you want to evaluate users javascript code right very simple example one function which is bad in javascript but it still exists is the eval function right so if i write like alert for example like this you will see i get an alert over here so this input can be string it has to be a string and you can get it from user and it will run it as a real javascript right so let's say let's for the sake of example let's say you are creating an application where whatever javascript i write over here you want to run it inside over here you can use eval or you can you know you know embed it in iframe which is a probably a better idea but you still get the idea so similarly over here you can see that one way to run react.js applications is to in general use an iframe right but in this preview at least i can see it's not using any iframe right so it just renders the app directly so let's say if i change this render function to be just a div with hello world so you can see over here i mean the text is white but you can see over here it just runs the react.js code directly right so it's evaling it instead of running it in an iframe better example is in the github readme so over here you can see that once you install react exe as code executor you can specify the code as string and you can just directly run it with a few more things like you can enable tailwind which is neat you can also specify dependencies if the code is using so if it's using framer motion or anything you can just send the whole libraries as you know node modules as imports from your node modules and you can also do like you know things like these where you can specify components and so on and so forth error handling a lot of things this is a relatively new project right i can see like it's just two days ago the first commit probably is relatively new project so it's something which you can use to create experiences where let's say you know you're getting some sort of input from ai react component maybe where you ask the ai to tell you that hey also give me like input ports and everything that you're using separately so that you can render it as an application right that's one use case which clicked me instantly when i saw this application and the second one generally was you know just curiosity to understand how this is working so because it's an open source project we can learn about this how this works so this is the code executor thing that you are using over here right so this is the code executor thing where you pass in the code so this is the component we are most interested in the only mandatory prop here is code rest of the configuration is optional so that's fine then there is a security option which is available over here so it's like regular expression thing or something local storage session storage window location i think he enforces some sort of security things but again like this is easily bypassable right so if you're evaluating javascript you should have more countermeasures like iframe or proper sandboxing but that's fine for now then you have transform code as a function then a factory function and then you get a component right so you finally create a component and then you just set that component and then that's the only component that's mounted on the screen right so you can see over here the component gets mounted once it's available if tailwind is available you also mount tailwind css jit mode where this javascript version where it's able to figure out class names and everything on runtime and then finally you have error boundary in which on error is also customized so if you pass on error in case of this custom error handling you can handle errors properly right let's look at this transform code and factory function because these are the two things i feel are you know the ones which are really neat so transform code comes from utils over here so this transform code for example what it's doing is that it's removing the default export first of all from the code using a regular expression all right then they create a map of safe variables this transform code is also receiving a dependencies which is something you pass over here right when when you're defining what dependencies are available so you replace all the non alphanumeric characters with an underscore then for the transpiled code you use babel transformer over here to convert this into a proper javascript from jsx i am assuming and then you create import transformer plug Again, where the dependencies that you have passed are replaced with the safe variable names 
Okay, so you are using Babel to transform the JSX or TSX, whatever is being passed into raw code. Then you're creating individual variable declarations for each dependency. So you're defining the safe name and then the original dependency, right? So that's the reason you have to sanitize the names is because if you're passing dependency like this, for example, this is not a valid variable name, right? In JavaScript. So is this, it's also not a valid variable name. You cannot have like the, these dashes. So you replace it, but at the same time, you keep the same dependencies and then you inject the code and then finally you return a function code as a string where you inject the original dependencies you inject the transpiled code and the exported name okay so transform code returns you function as a string which is compiled in javascript right now over here this is the fun part this is where what our equivalent of eval is right you are using new function constructor and new function constructor in javascript can be used to execute arbitrary code so if you look at this new function constructor over here let me just open this you can see you can create functions in javascript just using string also so new function a b return a plus b gives you like you know i'm pretty sure most of us have not created a function like this like ever and it's also not a good practice because effectively you are like evaluating code over here so obviously this is a massive massive risky thing to do with the user code but once you transform your code with babel you are executing you're creating a new function and at the same time you're also calling it right so if you look at this function over here you see that this returns a new function in general so you just call that to create back a component in react Right? So now this factory function, which you see over here, you can see it gets react as a dependency and the dependencies, which needs to be passed down, right? The dependency array. So you call the same function with react. So that injects all the, you know, once you do this, all the use state, use effect, all of those things starts to work. And then dependencies also, which you have just passed, you get your real component available, right? So this is the boundary where, you know, the whole code, this line is the boundary where the whole code goes from string, just to a simple string to an actual javascript function available which you can really mount and if you don't know react.js components are just functions right so this is why this plays out good because a component is nothing but a function in react.js if you just transform transpile it ahead of time with babel or any other tooling and you just eval it basically which is what's happening here you can technically just run it directly right which is what is exactly going on here and in this case like if anything goes wrong if anything happens you will see an unknown error occurred so if it's an instance of error message so that's why if i write something like you know if i am doing something like this where i'm removing the h1 you see that we get an error with unterminated jsx contents this is coming from the transform code thing inside the babel thing because babel is able to throw this error because it can understand like something is wrong so you land into this error block and you get an set error and you can also define your own error which will also be fired right so it's a pretty simple app right you you can see like it's not doing a lot of things it's a very simple thing but it's still something that will require you to at least think for a second right because how a component like this if you mount it with dependencies and all gets converted into a system which can actually like execute react.js code right and it's i feel it's perfectly fine to do this inside of an iframe right so i would not recommend doing this on the top level scope itself because again like a user can escape but if you are able to mount an iframe and you are able to put a sandbox on that that is not able to you know just change origin and do all of that iframe is a great sandbox on the web right so if you use it properly so yeah that's pretty much it for this video again i realize the repository is very new very early so i'm not going into the code review i'm not doing any sort of those things it was interesting to know how this works hopefully you found that helpful as well so yeah that's pretty much it for this one i will see you in the next video really soon